Hey everybody, it's Peter, and this is the 2023 Kawasaki Ninja 1000 SX, and it is done up with all the right accessories, and let's just get it out there. This is one of my very favorite Kawasaki bikes, and I almost bought this. So we're gonna talk about that, and we're gonna go through this bike in detail. And if you have questions about it, I wanna know what you think in the comment section. If you own the bike, let's tell us about your experiences with the thing, because I know there's a whole bunch of happy owners of this bike out there online, and let's just let people know who are looking for this bike what it's like to actually own this bike. You can fill the comment section there. And if you have questions, make sure you let me know, because I'm filming here at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals, Jim Gilbert's Power Sports, where I have complete access to the entire vehicle lineup. And if you have questions, we'll make sure we come back to them both in the comments section and in future videos. So feel free to subscribe if this is a bike that you're interested in. So let's talk about, first of all, why I didn't choose this bike and then why it's probably one of the best values, one of the best bikes in the Kawasaki lineup. All right, so the last time I filmed this bike, it didn't have the accessories on, so there's a lot more to talk about in this one, but I did mention that I almost bought it and didn't, and a couple people wanted clarification for why I didn't. So first of all, We'll talk about why this is an amazing value, why this is an amazing bike, and the bike I bought is not nearly as good of a value as this. So I bought the bike you see on screen right now, which is the Kawasaki Z900 RS SE. And I bought it because I like it. There's something about that retro style, that retro feel that I like, and the similarities of what I wanted in this bike are pretty close. It is a powerful bike. It has an upright seating position. I happen to put on heated grips just like this bike has. It doesn't have the wind protection, but it's capable of touring for my kind of use. And again, I bought it because I like it. It also, the SE model also had the upgraded brakes and suspension. And to me, great power, great brakes, great suspension all matter to me in a performance bike, and that bike had it, but, the bike you're looking at for 2023 is worth $300 more MSRP than this bike is. And that makes this a way better value. The problem with this bike is that really to use it to its potential, you do need to throw on some accessories because it's built to have these bags and maybe a couple other pieces on there. So we're gonna talk about this bike, which is done up well and done up the way I think most people are gonna wanna buy it in this video and we'll talk about a couple other value equation things. The one other value equation thing to be aware of, at least here in New Brunswick, is that this one is in a slightly more expensive insurance class. So even though you save a few hundred dollars uh, on the initial uh, cost of this bike, you come back and pay that to the insurance company instead. So something to keep in mind, but again, probably one of my favorite bikes. Let's start looking into the details. So first let's set the stage for where this is in the Kawasaki lineup because this is more of a sport tour but it also is in that sort of ninja class. So this is a 1043cc four cylinder engine. So if you look at the current ZX10, it's actually a smaller engine in the ZX10. It's 998cc. So this is one of the biggest engines. It is the biggest engine in the sport bike lineup for Kawasaki in the Ninja lineup. So large engine, but not quite as much power. Now, when I say not as much power, keep in mind that the ZX10 is over 200 horsepower, and this one is 140, just over 140 horsepower, but it also has a whole lot of torque. So in the lineup, you're dealing with something that has way more power than you would need for the road, but not up to current super sport standards for a leader bike. And I think that's kind of what makes it really good. Now, seating position, we're gonna show you in a second here. You are more upright on this bike as well. This really is set up for touring. You can use it as your everyday ride around town. But like I said, because of all the rest of the ergonomics, because of the technology, which we'll talk about in a second, adding these bags is really what makes this really good. Now, this one happens to have a taller windshield as well. All of the accessories, we're gonna talk about how they sort of set up on this bike and how they make it better. But starting point, this is the largest engine Ninja. It's very smooth, it's very refined, and although the engine has been around for a while, they've gone through tweaks throughout the process to make this an excellent bike in the class. It really is a class leader. Now, in that sport touring lineup, outside of Kawasaki, a lot of people, a lot of companies are going with the more adventure bike styling. A lot of people like that. We're gonna show seating position, like I said, in a second. But the one thing to remember is it's kind of like in the automotive industry. A lot of luxury SUVs are in that sport SUV styling. A sport SUV is still not a Porsche 911. And the way a lower bike like this handles makes it stand out. This is still the traditional model for what is a great handling, great fun 
touring bike, and that's where I think this stands out. So let's start looking at some of the individual features. We're gonna talk technology, we're gonna talk accessories, and we're gonna show you the overall position of everything on this, because I think this bike is really unique, and I think it's a little bit overlooked sometimes. Let's get going with that. So the one place I like to start with all these bikes is on the very front wheel. It kind of, you know, looking at the front wheel of any motorcycle gives you a sense of its design and its purpose. Now this one does have an accessory here, a little frame slider over here. You'll see some frame sliders and other pieces around uh, that are, you know, here as accessories. But what comes standard is exactly what you see. The radial mount calipers here, you have not just the ABS, but sort of the, uh, the KIBS, which is Kawasaki's advanced ABS system. It can take into account engine braking and a whole bunch of other features, which makes this bike able to be driven very quickly, but obviously stop very quickly as well. So you got about 30 centimeters of discs here. Um, you know, these, bike, these brakes look to me to be very similar to the Z900 RS brakes, again, with that radial mount. That means they can be upgraded to really high performance brakes, but I don't think you'll ever need to upgrade. These are really fantastic as, are, as they are. You've also got the upside down shock. So right here, of course, that's sort of standard for the class, but that gives you less unsprung weight, which is what you want in a sport bike. And then of course the tires here, our traditional size in the front, that 120-70 ZR17 tire. The rumor is that these Bridgestone S22s, Battleaxe Hypersport S22s, were actually designed for this bike. So of course they're used on other bikes, but these are very good sport tires here for a sport touring machine. So right away you've got the performance quotient down pat. Good engine, good handling, good performance. Let's move our way through. So moving from the front wheel, let's take a look at the entire bike now. So of course the engine down here, four cylinder, that's gonna create some width in here, the inline four cylinder, and the bodywork wraps around wider. What that does is both the frame and the bodywork give you a little bit of wind protection, actually quite a bit of wind protection. So you are both narrow in the seat here, which is what you wanna be on a sporty bike, on a sport bike, but you also have good wind protection, which is what you want on a touring bike. So that's all well designed. This is an aluminum frame, about 514 pounds ready to go with this bike before you start adding some of the accessories that are on this. So not the lightest weight bike, but the overall suspension geometry, everything else about this, they've tweaked the suspension geometry for this uh, version of this bike. In the previous years, they used to talk about low speed handling not being nearly as good as this one. So again, even at 514, that's fairly light for a touring bike or very light for a touring bike. A Little bit on the heavier side for a sport bike, but some of those heavier things go into giving you that comfort. And again, we talked about the engine. You've got the horizontal backlink rear suspension in here, which is exactly what you would have on a modern Kawasaki sport bike. So you've really got that sport style that centralizes the weight, helps make it fun. And then again, a touring piece here. This is something that is actually the same as on my Z900 RS, but only on that SE model, you have the ability to adjust preload remotely. Now that matters here if you're taking a passenger or if you're taking extra luggage, you can really adjust that preload on the fly, which allows you to just compensate for different weight and very quickly do that. So again, set up well for touring, set up well for sport. The exhaust down here, Honestly, it's the one thing I don't love about the bike. It sounds great. It's nice and quiet at idle. It sounds great at revs, but it is a larger exhaust. Now, one of the things that does is make it Euro 5 compliant, which makes it, of course, uh, you know, a bike that is fairly efficient overall, but also low on emissions, which again is important in a modern, uh, modern motorcycle. So let's start bringing the accessories into the picture here because again, I really feel that these bags are necessary to sort of fulfill the purpose of this bike. You can buy this bike at that 15, 699 price point, but you're really gonna wanna add these bags on. And bags, these bags are not the cheapest, but they are absolutely the best for this bike. This handle right here is good for your passenger. This bike, again, has the accessory cover instead of the passenger seat here, but this handle is good for your passengers. It gives them a lot of, um, able to grab onto something that's very firm. This is metal, it's not plastic, so it's nice and solid. And then you are able to mount these bags cleanly. When you take these bags off, which I'm not gonna do in this video, because again, it's a sold bike, I don't wanna touch it too much. Um, but when you take these bags off, you have that clean sport bike look, which is really nice. Normally, you would have uh, your key in here, so your uh, regular locks in here that match to the ignition key. This one is not quite done being accessorized up, so that's what would be in there, and these would lock to the bike. Lockable storage on a touring bike is really nice. Being able to take them off quickly, take them inside to a hotel room or something else is really nice as well. And these are big, uh, big storage areas. So you can see there as they fold out, You've got this little bit of elastic strap in here. You can easily fit a full face helmet in there. And of course your weekend's worth of stuff on both sides. So this is really, again, an important piece to this bike, especially if you're looking at it as a touring bike. 
The accessories are added in pieces. There's this gloss black thing. You can do green if you wanted to. Um, so you can customize the look a little bit. I think the way it's done is the way I would do it as well with the green stripe and the black top. But again, you can sort of customize that a little bit up as well. It's color matched. The key when it's in there will match as well. They are easily removable. It's a really important accessory on a bike like this and it mounts super cleanly to your rail, factory rail right there as well. So I'm gonna jump on this bike right now to show you the seating position and then we're gonna to move to the technology because all of this sort of fits together into what this bike really is. So jumping on here, you can see it's nice easy climb over there and uh, I'm flat footed, I'm about six feet tall so very easy to sit on this bike. And for any level of Ninja, this is one of the most comfortable Ninjas here. You can see the clip-ons really do rise up and put me in this position here. We'll put my feet where they go. Your legs are tucked up nicely, but not too uh, compressed. So again, easily good in a touring position. Like we mentioned, the wind uh, clears your legs there easily. This bike has heated grips. We're gonna talk about some of those controls in a second. We'll also talk about the touring windshield, which is on this in a second here, which is gonna make a difference. I should point out that regardless of whether it's the touring windshield or the standard windshield, you can really adjust the, uh, the um, angle of that, which effectively changes the way the wind goes over you. So if it's buffeting at one speed, you can just change it a little bit. If you want a little bit more wind protection at various speeds, you can change that on the fly, essentially. You know, pull over, do it. There's a warning sticker here that says, do not adjust that while you're riding. That's why they sort of make it a two-handed um, two affair. But it is very easy to make that adjustment. And the touring windshield is actually something I would probably go for if you were on this bike, the one problem with taller windshields is sometimes they can create that buffeting in a different area, but because the windshield is so easily adjustable, you can work around that. So really worth uh, going for there. But there's your seating position. Now let's talk about the technology that helps make this a great touring bike and a great sport bike. So when you're thinking of this bike, think of it in terms of cars, more like a luxury car. And that's really what this is. It's a luxury bike without the luxury price tag. And that's why it sort of stands out in its class. But to be considered in that luxury class, you need great technology. And one of the key pieces to that technology is what's called an IMU. The IMU, I've done an entirely separate video on that. What it can do is it can sense the position of the bike. It can sense if it's leaned left or right. It can sense if it's wheeling or not. It can sense if it's twisting, turning in every which way. And all of the, or many of the systems on this bike can use that information to determine what the electronics are gonna do. So your traction control, things like your, um, your, your ABS and those kind of things, they can use that information to make sure that it is responding well to what you're doing. And on a bike where you're touring all day, Sometimes when you grab those brakes or you've got all that power to use, having a bike that allows you to, or works with you to control it really works well. So going into and out of a corner, it's constantly monitoring your speed going in and out, your angle going in and out, the engine braking, the overall braking. It's gonna make sure that when you're trying to choose your line going into a corner, going around a corner and coming out of a corner, all of the calculations are being made, you know, many, many, many times per second to allow you to go smoothly in and come smoothly out. It works with you to make it easier to ride. And that's the sign of great technology. And Kawasaki really does nail down that technology uh, for a lot of your riding, whether it's you know aggressive sport riding or whether it's just casual riding. Another cool piece of this bike is it has a up down quick shifter. So you can set that on, turn it on or off in the dash here. But the quick shifter is really cool. So of course, quick shifters, if you're not familiar with them, first gear, you're gonna release that clutch, get into first gear. But from that point on, you can go up and down, especially as you're into higher revs or more sport riding, it works very well. You don't have to release the throttle to do your upshifts. You just, uh, you can push it in and you can downshift and blip itself when you let off the throttle to come down and you're not releasing the clutch. It makes it both quicker to ride, but also a little bit easier to ride on a tour. So whether you want sport riding or touring, that up-down quick shifter is really unique and makes this bike sort of a standout within the Kawasaki line. And again, sets it apart and makes it compete with bikes much more expensive than, it's, than what it is. So now let's take a look at some of the technology in the dash here as we move through. So I always talk when these, we show these TFT displays that there can be some glare. This one also has a protective cover over, which is not perfectly installed. We're gonna have to tweak that and adjust that, but there is a protective cover which can also affect the glare, especially on camera. There's much, much less glare in person. So bear with us as we turn this to the on position. Now, there's a lot of things going on here that I really like. This is a typical dash that you're gonna see on a whole lot of uh, 
Kawasaki sport bikes now. And again, you can customize it. We're not going to fully customize it in this one. But I do want to show you that, you know, you can see that clear tachometer across the top there, clear speedometer. You can invert the color so the white can be black, the black can be white. You've got the fuel gauge on the left. I should mention there's a 19 liter fuel tank here, which is a good size for a touring bike. Um, your temperature is always displayed there. You can see right down, let's see if we can show you, right down there is 21 degrees. And then there's two sections there, this section and the one just above it. We're going to zoom in a little bit to those that we can pay attention to right now. Right now, it's showing you a lean angle in a bar graph. So that's a sort of a live instant bar graph. And there's a number of live things that you can do. You could swap out your fuel gauge over here to have something like your throttle position or your braking position show in a live graph as well in a different setting. But that lean angle is part of the, using that uh, IMU and that shows you an instant setting. And we can go over here and show you that this bike at this point has not been leaned farther than 17 degrees to the left, which is probably what we're at right now or so, given, give or take on the center stand and 12 degrees to the right. So that shows your max lean angle when you're riding. So you can come out of your corners and sort of see where you are for your lean angle, uh, get an idea of that. And again, that's using that IMU for your display instead of just for your safety. Keep looking through that display here. We're gonna go from max lean angle to your odometer. Then you go to trip A, trip B, and back to there. Now the one just below is gonna show your fuel efficiency. Now currently it's set up to kilometers per liter. You can do liters per 100 kilometers. You can do miles per gallon, miles per gallon US or UK. So lots of options there, but we're gonna go instant fuel efficiency, which is what you have. Average fuel efficiency there. The range to empty, which when you start driving, will tell you how much range in kilometers based on the way you've been driving. And then you have average speed and total time as well as your battery voltage in there. Now you don't see, again, a thermometer in there and that's because like I said, thermometer is always displayed there and your temperature gauge is just above that as well as the clock on the right. So really good information there. We're gonna zoom back out for a second here a little bit. Gear indicator you have on the right side, you have neutral, and of course your gear indicator is right there, one through six, of course. And you also have your riding modes. Right now we only have it set up for the sport, the road, and the rain. All of those are gonna tweak for exactly that. They're gonna adjust your traction control settings. They're gonna adjust your throttle. You have high power and low power, so full power and low power on this bike as well. So you can dial it down if you need to. So again, great technology. Depending on your riding conditions, you can really make it work for you as well. Now let's take a look at some of the controls on this bike. So taking a look at the left side controls, of course a touring bike should have cruise control. This has electronic cruise control right there. So you can see that simple to use cruise control it works the exact same as it would on your car. It's a sort of a digital type system, uh, displays in your dash what your speed is set to. So very easy to use, very well within reach. And then you have your other controls in here. Now this may look um, interesting. This controls that display along with the reset button here. All of that controls that TFT display that we just showed you, but it does move your high beam. So again, most Kawasaki bikes have this little trigger right here. Uh, so certainly in the Ninja lineup, you have that trigger to flash your high beam. This one, you can turn on your high beam by pushing it out. So instead of having that big switch here for your high beam, they repurpose this area for your TFT display. And I think that works very well. Very easy to turn on your high beam, very easy to turn it off. And again, just to flash it. Uh, then down here, signals, you have a horn way at the bottom and your four way flashers. Four way flashers, hazard lights, I think they're important for a touring bike as well. What you have in here is heated grips. Now I put the same heated grips on my bike. I'm gonna do a video on these heated grips in the future. So if you wanna know about these, there are some really good pro, uh, pros to these and there's a couple cons to this as well. So we're gonna talk about some of that in a future video. So that's the left side controls. We're gonna zoom out just a little bit here for a second. And we're gonna take a look at the clutch lever here because it's the same idea as the brake lever. You have adjustments here for reach. So you can push this out. You can dial that uh, to wherever you need it to move it in or out. And that does a couple things for you. One, it adjusts it for reach reach, but because of the angle it's going to be on, it will adjust the feel of where that grab point is on your clutch, which can be a nice thing as well to just sort of customize your riding position. And it is a slipper and assist clutch, which makes a big difference. One, it's good for performance. We can talk about that in another video. We've done it a few times, but also it makes for a lighter clutch pull on a thousand cc bike. It's a bigger engine. Uh, having that little bit of assisted clutch just makes it a little bit lighter, especially if you're driving through a lot of traffic. Let's take a quick look on the right side, look at the controls over there, and uh, then we'll move through. Over on the throttle side, things are done pretty cleanly. Instead of having a kill switch and a start switch separate, they combine it into one here. They do that on a number of bikes. I think the ZX-10 is actually the same way as well. And then you have your sort of radial mount uh, brake levers here. So because of the way it's mounted, because of the way it works, it really is good for feel. You have great brake feel, which is something that they don't always think about in a touring bike, but they do think about in a sport bike. And again, that sport tour, you get some nice features in there. So now let's talk about some of the accessories that are on this bike, and I'll talk about how I would set it up. We'll talk about how this one's set up, and again, how to make this bike sort of perfect for yourself, because the accessories really do make this bike. 
All right, like I said off the top, the accessories really matter on this bike. You can buy this bike as is without the bags, without the taller windshield, without those kinds of things. And I think you could really enjoy it, but that does put it in the mix with several other bikes, even within the Kawasaki lineup for performance, for overall style, for all kinds of different things. Once you start adding this up as a touring bike though, you really do well. So to me, if you're buying this bike, the bags are really something you should consider with it. I think that's something most people are gonna add. Uh, I don't, it doesn't bother me that that doesn't come with the bike. You could add them later as well. Uh, but these, I think, are really important. I've had these on a Versus one, or a Versus 650 that I've owned for a number of years, and they're just really good bags. Even within the aftermarket, they don't look as good. They may not fill as much. So having factory bags that mount on very securely, that will lock to the bike with a single key, uh, that come on and off very easily, is just hugely important to add to what this bike can do. Because again, with all the power, the cruise control, the comfortable seating position, to not have bags that are this good on it, you know, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So this is something I would definitely add. The taller windshield was something that when I was looking at buying this bike, I wasn't sure if I wanted it or not. And I can tell you right now, I would go for it. Again, I mentioned before, sometimes the taller windshields, you have to be aware that that buffeting will change its position. But because this bike, whether you get the uh, touring windshield or not, uh, is adjustable. Let me just get to the handle here. You can move it so much. You can really change where that buffeting would hit you. And although it's only about an inch taller than the regular windshield, it is significantly wider, it has more air coverage around there. And again, for me, I think that's something I would definitely add to this. Heated grips, depends on where you are here in uh, New Brunswick. I've used my heated grips a whole bunch already this year. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be able to ride without them out here. So heated grips are really great as well. I would add that. Now, a couple accessories on this bike. You do have a uh, tank protector right here, which again, depending on what you're wearing, makes a lot of sense down there. Uh, what else is on this bike? They have the frame sliders everywhere on this, which of course, if you're gonna drop this bike, that's gonna help uh, save you, if, you know, in the event that something happens right across the front there as well. This one actually has a sort of tamper-proof or tamper-resistant uh, oil fill as well that the owner decided to go with, which on a touring bike, if you're gonna be leaving it outside or leaving it around, I guess that's a good idea. You don't want something mess somebody messing with your um, oil and that kind of thing. So a lot of nice accessories, but what's cool about this bike is even accessorized fully up, it really doesn't look out of place. Sometimes you start putting accessories on bikes and it just starts looking not great. And this one, everything's integrated well. So like I said, those heated grips blend in perfectly. A couple things that I haven't pointed out, this one has a 12 volt port. You can get a GPS mount through a little tank bolts here that sort of sits right in front of uh, this area here. There's lots of ways to mount a GPS and a 12 volt port right up there on the dash is an accessory, which again, if you're gonna mount anything like a phone, a GPS, that kind of thing up there, it's nice to have that right on the dash. There's a USB port, I believe under the seat of this bike. There is on other bikes as well. That's one thing I haven't checked uh, there. And then and again, if you're going to be touching the screen or having it out, uh, cleaning it off, that screen protector is something you can decide if you want on anything with the TFT display. The one thing I didn't mention about this bike that I should have mentioned, we talked about the rear suspension, the preload adjuster. The front suspension is also adjustable, fully adjustable, which is really nice, not just for setting it up once to sort of work with you, but also the type of riding you, you want to do. You can tweak it for various roads. If you need it to be a little softer on a certain type of tour with rougher roads, you can do that. You can tweak it back up. And on a touring bike, I think the adjustable suspension really makes uh, sense because you may have the roads around your house sort of dialed in, but if you want to take it to a racetrack for a day, you could take the bags off and do that and dial up the suspension. If you get on uh, harder or firmer, softer, whatever kind of, or bumpier roads, you want to firm it up or soften it up, you have the ability to do that on the fly right here. Very simple to do. So again, really versatile bike. Let's talk about who this bike is for. So when I talk about who a bike is for, it can really vary based on a whole bunch of things. This is a great, all-purpose bike. Obviously, it's not intended to connect with the off-road, the dirt, that kind of thing. But if you're looking for a sport bike, this could easily fill, fit the bill. This has more power than the ZX6R. It has, uh, you know, more torque for sure than that. It is a little bit heavier, but it still handles as well as almost any one of us can ride. Uh, again, this bike and many of the other bikes in the Kawasaki lineup are very well equipped to be performing well beyond the average rider. And that's one thing to keep in mind with this bike. Because of the power of this bike, this is probably not a very good first bike. This is for an experienced rider. It is a very good value for the class, especially when you start putting on the accessories. As you take some of those bags and other things off, even if you went with a regular windshield, that kind of thing, this becomes an everyday bike that you can drive around town, but as you start putting them on, you can do high-speed travel on, you know, 
major interstates put all kinds of hours in the saddle to try to check out new places and then when you get there if there's scenic roads that are fun to drive you still have something that's fun to drive so Again, the insurance class does take this into, in some cases, that super sport category. Now, it's not crazy, but it does step up again compared to something like my Z900RS. But overall, the value in this bike is absolutely incredible. I do think you look at this bike at $15,999, which is what it is for 2023, and you have to consider adding the accessories to really make this the standout value. Without the bags, maybe without the taller windshield, maybe without the heated grips, um, you know, it's, it's very good, it's got great technology, it's a good base, but when you start putting on a couple of these things, to me, that's where the value really stands out. You get a lot of bike for the money, even with the accessories that, you know, do cost extra, I think it makes sense. And again, one benefit of here at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals, Jim Gilbert's Power Sports, if you just want to buy the bike and not have the accessories, a lot of companies will make you pay for the accessories when you buy the bike to get the discount. But here, you buy a bike, you become a VIP customer. You want to add these bags next year, you can do that. You're not sure about the touring windshield, you can add that kind of thing later. This one's got that little cover over the seat here. You can add that from the beginning, you can add that afterwards as well. So lots of options here to accessorize this up over time if you want, but I stand by my, fact, my point that this is probably one of the very best Kawasaki bikes to look at for a touring perspective. Now there is a bike that shares this engine. It's the Versus 1000. We haven't done a review of that one yet. We will. It is actually slightly detuned in power. And of course it's a little bit larger bike. It's going to be more comfortable, more wind protection, more everything on a long tour, but it is going to be less of a sport bike. And that's something to keep in mind. So, is this bike right for you? Well, you can check it out. It's, uh, this one actually is sold, so there's very few. Actually, I don't think we have any left at the current time at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals, but you can connect with our sales team if you're interested in this bike because, hey, if you need a bike, we'll help figure out how to get you one. And, uh, of course, uh, they've got, uh, th this is the largest volume Kawasaki dealer in the country, so if anybody can get you one, we can. And to this owner, congratulations. You have bought one of the best Kawasaki bikes ever built in my mind. This thing's incredible and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks everybody for watching. Fill the comment section here. And again, if you have questions, make sure you ask me because we can continue to come back to these things again and again. Thanks for watching.